Welcome to my channel, and today we're gonna ask the question, what the heck is Dungeons 4? The demo. Because Dungeons 4 is not yet released, it will release in 4 or 5 weeks on the 9th of November. And Calypso has put out a demo of it. First things first, we're gonna check out the options as they are in the demo real quick. Uh, so we start out with general stuff. We can change the narrative, uh, narrated talkativeness, which personally I really appreciate because that thing can get a little bit annoying, but it's part of the charm. If you've never played any of the dungeons games, you are a dungeon master and you defend against the good guys and you have a narrator who narrates it, which is very in the spirit of Dungeon Keeper in terms of the humor and all that kind of stuff. So you can set the text language, really nice, autosave interval, 30 minutes is a bit rough. So we'll put it down to a more palatable thing. Ten. This can be a problem depending on how much it affects the game. Sometimes games scroll, like they go really slow. Scroll speeds for uh, screen edge in windowed mode and full screen. We are in windowed mode, so maybe we turn this up to 30 as well. I don't know why they would be different. Um, show step-by-step -step instructions, sure. Show game hint, sure. We'll take all that for the moment. Health bars, I like that option. That is very cool. Always uh, upon change, selected units, never. That That is really cool. I like that. Maybe upon change is good. Uh, creature names, uh, basically the same options. And I like those as well. That's, that's pretty neat. Um, thought bubbles, we'll keep them. Blood splatter, we'll keep that. And, oh, that might be... That might be interesting for me. We'll check it for the moment. Uh, so we don't have to snap back to the original position when we rotate the camera. Might be good. I like to change it sometimes. So graphics, uh, we are in Windows full screen mode, so no resolution slider here. Uh, they do have some resolution scaling in that. Uh, they turn on VSync. You can set a minimum frame rate, which is pretty, uh, maximum frame rate, which is pretty good. It is just these options that you slide through. So go with what your display can do. Brightness slider, uh, ambient occlusion, bloom, and resource effects, which uh, is not show effects in the UI when resources are gained. That's all. That's very minimal. That uh, is very, very, very minimal. But again, demo might be more later. Uh, sound options are what you would expect. Overall volume, dialogue volume, effects, user interface, which is what we're hearing right now. This, for example, and the music volume, which I've turned on a little bit before starting. And now there are the controls, which is nice. Not every game does this anymore, where you are allowed to. And if you look at the scroll bar here, we, we can rebind, I would say, anything. Um, so you have different levels of looking at the game. You have the dungeon level and the overworld level. We'll see all that later. Um, and yeah, there, there's a lot to do here. You can bind your various spells, all that kind of stuff. Love it. Really, really good. Good that that's in there. So let's apply, and uh, we will simply go and get into the campaign. Now, I've played Dungeons 2 and 3. I have spent my life, early childhood, with Dungeon Keeper. It's my favorite game. Dungeon Keeper is the reason I am called Impra. It's the reason I've branded my whole thing here around it, because since Dungeon Keeper, I've commanded so many imps and goblins and all that kind of stuff the basic evil creatures that I feel like I am the Emperor by now. I have uh, definitely earned that title. So we'll go into the campaign and see uh, The Last Stand, stand. narrator. about destroying the last remaining heroes. Amongst others, her stepbrother Tristan. All right, so you get the text, which is nice. Uh, new skills, I don't know if there's supposed to be something there. You get a difficulty slider. Um, I think easy was selected that's not very visible uh since the white skull has a slight white outline based on the selection um i would have figured the big skull the one that is the largest is what we have selected i don't like that too too much this this is easily confused uh we'll just go with normal difficulty i'm not here to prove anything to anyone so we will be playing as Thalia, the lady back here, which has been the protagonist at least for Dungeons 3. Dungeons 2 has been a little bit too long a time ago. So let's go. Once upon a time, long, long ago in... Well, 
you know the rest, the absolute evil had, in the fabulous predecessor to this game, taken over the entire overworld with its creatures. Now it spent its time on debauched parties and... Wait a minute. The entire overworld? No! One small village of indomitable heroes still held out against the invaders. Mm -hmm. Nice the little Asterix and Obelix reference. But all this was about to change once and for all, because the remote control evil sent its most vicious general into the field. The Dark Elf Talia. I forget, it's a German developer. Talia, not Thalia. ...came back from her vacation in a thoroughly good mood. Before that, she had defeated her foster father, the paladin Thanos. This fact is important to note. This last remaining village of heroes was protected by none other than Tristan, foster son of Thanos and Talia's stepbrother. This proud warrior in shining, his handsome heroic chest accentuating armor was the last glimmer of hope for the forces of good. I like the art style. That's that's good. It's, it's kind of simple but expressive. Couldn't wait to really kick her stepbrother's ass. And so our story begins. All right, we get some loading screen tips and tricks here. You can use the Hand of Terror to easily take creatures to the overworld. Change the overworld and issue a command. The creatures then automatically leave the dungeon. Okay. Fighting for their survival. Yep. This seemed to be the perfect time for Tristan to make his appearance. The last mighty hero of the good races. My brothers, in your eyes I see the same fear that would lead me to despair. The day may come when the courage of true heroes is extinguished. When we abandon our companions and all bonds of friendship are broken. Uh -huh. But that day is still far off. Stand fast, heroes of the West! And with those familiar sounding words, Tristan charged into battle to the cheers of his men. The heroes of good had managed to capture some of the evil creatures. Nevertheless, it was more than questionable whether a few minor victories and a brilliant speech could do anything against the absolute evil's armies. A storm of darkness and gloom descended, heralding the arrival of Talia, the absolute evil's general. This entrance not only panicked the defenders of good, but also seemed to strengthen the creatures of evil. Hey, I'm back. Time to kick a little hero butt. Forward, creatures! Show me what you can do. Punch them, smack dab in the mouth, smash them in the face. Oh, and just as a precaution, get me my handbook of worn-out third-rate catchphrases. <laughs> ah, if my eyes don't deceive me that's my stupid stepbrother tristan over there too just waiting for me to lovingly put his head on a spear ha! today is gonna be a good day talia seemed to be very sure of victory some might find this puzzling as it was the beginning of a long new campaign but okay maybe the rest of the missions are nothing but a string of debauched victory celebrations who knows Alright, so the narrator and the narration is quite long and they have this um, they have this <laughs> sort of humor that a lot of Calypso games have. So we are currently in the tutorial bit and we can move with WASD, which is always nice. I get confused when that is not a thing in games anymore. Uh, we select our units as you would expect, left click and mouse like that and move them around. It's all fine. I'm gonna massacre you. Um, if I can just remember how that works again. Let's summon some shadow tentacles here. Things took over at this point. Something which wannabe pro gamers often refer to as auto attack. Tanya also remembered that she had a few skills that she could invoke. Let's lure these into. Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> Boom. Didn't even That's need to lure. It's done. <laughs> Talia's mighty storm once again stood at her disposal. 
As you can tell, uh, we're dealing 666 damage, which is, of course, because we're demonic and evil and all that kind of stuff. Uh, sometimes areas of the map are a little bit locked off uh, to you. So you will have to defeat, like, a barricade or um, stuff like that. Someone actually paid my subordinates. Ah, oh, forget that. I'm the only one who's allowed to do that. Time to bust these things open. Pulverize okay, so we, we can <laughs> chain commands as well, which is nice. And we are now rescuing some of our folk. You have destroyed a cage. All right, okay. Talia had to feed all the creatures. Not to be outdone by her stepbrother, she too gave a brilliant speech. Speech? Uh, sure. We can't go through Creature. here, I don't think. Yeah, that's Time the, to punch the do -gooders map limit. Right in the kisser. Forward! Punch them in the face! Kick them in the shins! Break their belt buckles so they trip on their pants! <laughs> yeah, a lot yes. of talking in these. Very inspiring. So we got a bunch of uh, frontline warriors, the orcs, and we got some healers in form of these um, naga. And they have their own names as well. So each of these has a little bit of a personality to them. They have a little bit of a, you know, specificity. They're, they're not just a random faceless anything. Um... Use a mission-specific action. Okay, we're not activating the fury just yet, but uh, we'll do that in a moment. Usually, I would attack the healer first, of course, but uh, given that we are dealing basically one-shot damage to most anything that we might see, I'm not too worried about it. Talia had reached the center of battle. With another brilliant speech, she goaded her creatures on one more time. Another speech? Oh. All right. Ding dong, the hero's dead. Is that okay? Honestly, this. I don't know if I can work with you like this. <coughs> and we'll turn on our fury thing. After Talia's words, the creatures surged forward and flocked to their link. And Talia will just kill all the healers. Or would like to, but the defenses on say. the left and right flanks made progress impossible. Talia had to destroy them in order to receive further support. Okay, uh, your creatures tend to kind of go a little bit haywire. Um, F2 to select all the combat units. That's nice. And they allow, of course, uh, creating groups. The healers know to heal. Heroes left defensive flank could no longer withstand the breaching evil's creatures. All right, so let's go through here and gather up some more creatures. So what does F1 do? F1 just goes to our hero, so that's fine. I like that they give us a little bit of uh, um, credits right early on. Because that's often something that's you know, falls a little bit by the wayside. So let's destroy all this before we move through this army. I want to have my tentacles ready. So we can zoom in a little bit as well. Zoom out is this is maximum. It's not super ideal, honestly. Could be more, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. You can tab through the creatures, and you basically tab based on their uh, type. So if you want to select a specific ability, you can just tab through them, uh, which is, I believe it was the same in the, in the last game, and it's kind of common to RTS games. In that way. At the moment, we're still in the only fighting phase. Uh, so, yeah, let's again, fury to go into rage. Into Talia, stepsister, you dare to show your face here after killing our foster father. Uh, yeah. Is that a trick question? You can see I'm here. Thanos deserved what he got. And I thought to myself, hmm, hey, like father, like son. You will pay for your deeds, sister. The light will protect me. Alright. So I'm supposed to kill that, that lad. Uh, I will just go with the most basic thing. Right click on him. And then summon our tentacle. 
I mean, he's dealing quite a bit of damage, so... Might not be as easy as uh, we figured it might be. Our rage is ready in just a moment, so we'll her fury. Sister, go ahead and do that. And come back to the side of good. They do use their skills automatically, so you don't necessarily have to use them. Tristan was bathed in a golden light that seemed to protect him. But if you want to do, that's fine. Okay. As if this wasn't dragging on way too long already. Can't we just jump straight to the point where I greedily take over the world? So some micring might be required to uh, actually get these missions done and won. It's not an auto win to just let your creatures run around. In your eyes, I see the same fear that would lead me to despair. The day may come when the courage of true heroes is extinguished. When we abandon our companions and all bonds of friendship are broken. But that day is still far off. Stand fast, heroes of the West! Oh, didn't you spout that same bullshit earlier? In exactly the same words. No, not at all. I am known for my brilliant speeches, wicked stepsister. I seem to remember that whenever you were supposed to speak in front of the class, we had to get a mop. You'll pay for that. Onward, faithful! Destroy the evil! All the magical portals have been destroyed. And with them, Tristan's shield went up in smoke. <laughs> That's the way I like it. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. I was just about to kick my stepbrother's butt. See, you can uh, definitely and you should um, fight with some sense. So, it doesn't have to end this way. move your group. Move your creatures as you would in in RPGs and, and everything, so. Get your healers away, you know. Make sure you don't stand in the thing that clearly is about to deal damage to you. This isn't the end. We'll meet again. There's some strategy and tactic to what's going on. With these words, Tristan quickly created a portal and threw himself through it with the last of his strength. The portal closed again behind him. Treachery, fraud, cheater! This was supposed to be my victory! And what the hell kind of glove is that anyway? Looks to me like game design forgot to balance the thing properly. Maybe the people in charge were still too captivated by your great speech. It brought tears to my eyes too. However, not of emotion. <laughs> As if the bird brains these evil creatures have needed grand speeches. A few skulls to bash in, and the social calendar for the evening is filled. Well, each to their own. <clears throat> but apparently, Tristan had suffered a mishap, as the aforementioned magic glove still lay in the place where it was last used. It would seem that he had accidentally lost it. <laughs> Wonderful. This thing is just what I need. Tray chic. I'll um, just grab that right away. And so our story begins. <laughs> okay. Our story begins with getting the Infinity Glove from a franchise that they don't own at all. Uh, you get some statistics at the end rolling by. You might have noticed in the battle, creatures did gain experience points, so they have levels, which will be... A little bit more relevant once we get to the dungeon part where you can train them up a little bit before you venture out. Um, so we'll just see how far this demo goes uh, so far. Let's go into the next map. Unfortunately, UI overlays don't work in cutscenes, so Tanya couldn't read just exactly what the glove did. Yeah, you, you gotta be fine with the breaking of the fourth wall and the yes, comedy. It's to the absolute evil in its form as the dungeon world. And so misfortune took its course, because at the same time, Tanya wanted to demonstrate how loudly she could snap her fingers. But this snap which would go down in the history books as the Dungeon Lord Snap, unleashed horrific forces that were discharged into the Dungeon Lord himself. 
Okay. As Tanya rose to her feet, the gauntlet had disappeared, and the dungeon lord lay dying. Viewers often began to cry at this point because it made them think back to the last really good superhero movie. Talia mourned for about five seconds. Talia had shattered the realms of good and served them onto the absolute evil on a silver platter, while it had actually done nothing at all. So Talia now became the absolute ruler. She had no clue about how to rule, but more than made up for it with hubris and consistently ignoring glaring problems. In addition, she surrounded herself with a staff of incompetent advisors. What could possibly go wrong? Ten minutes later, Tristan had captured Talia, locked her in a cage, and put the armies of absolute evil to flight. And so the story ends. We'll tell you how the story continues in overpriced microtransaction bites. Oh, wait, wait, wrong script. That's a different developer. Hang in there, I've almost got it. While Tanya was That's too bad, honestly, because they are they put out a lot of DLC. Evil continued to float through the ether. It wasn't about to admit defeat that easily, but for evil to triumph once again, it needed Talia back, for better or for worse. And so the swirling essence of absolute evil set about commanding the perplexed-looking chaotic hordes and freeing Talia. Alright, okay, so that, that's the story set up. Why would we need to do anything at all if we just defeated the good in the last game, right? So, it's an okay setup. stupid little good elf. Otherwise, I'll have a hard time wringing your scrawny neck. What the hell do you want from me anyway? Talia, stepsister, your deplorable deeds must not go unpunished. You have slain our foster father, Thanos, a blasphemous affront to our goddess, whom you, to top it all off, have also slain. But we will have plenty of time to argue on our journey. I am here for the stone. Brynhild, if you please. You know you can, you little cutie. Oi! Who are you, lazy lot? Get that destroyer of worlds class hammer going. All right. Okay. Talia had been captured. Only the bubbling around the place essence of absolute evil could save her. It was amusing to leave Talia in the clutches of her brother. But on the other hand, without her help, the shapeless evil would probably just roam the countryside as a disembodied something or other and at best be hired for third-rate horror movies. Fortunately, a forgotten dungeon heart lying in the underground could quickly be reactivated. Together with the creatures of the Horde, it would be easy to smash the do-gooder heroes there to smithereens. All right, very good. Wafting evil dungeon part. That dwarven contraption on the overworld as it posed a threat to the underground, and with it, the dungeon heart. It was therefore necessary to build a mighty dungeon, or rather, to have one built, because, as a wafting essence, the disembodied evil could not do much itself. So, here, here's the dungeon keeper bit of it. And, um, so, first of all, you can see our hand kind of floating around, following our actual cursor, doing things. Uh, we have some information on what we're supposed to do. We have our little workers here. We have the heart, which works a little bit different, but not too different uh, from the dungeon heart in Dungeon Keeper. So you have to keep this thing alive. And uh, you have a little bit of a treasury right there, which will fill up uh, until you actually build one. Uh, you have your throne room, which I think is nothing except cosmetic, which is kind of cute because only our little helmet is here, as we are kind of destroyed. And this here... Not quite sure, but it might be like the portal where our creatures are going to come through. Uh, as you can see, every creature here has its little own name. Uh, I wonder how many snuffle variations they were able to come up with, because we can have quite a few of these. Uh, there's a lot of menus up here. And uh, I like the style. It's still pretty, pretty, honestly. 
Um, so if you like this kind of game <laughs> uh, and you can look past the humor, uh, I think it's definitely worth checking out. So we just hold down left click and build some uh, commands for our creatures. You can see the blue ones are, I would say the ones that are easily reached. Uh, no, actually there's just a difference between the yellow ones are high value gold veins, which will take a while to get through. Whereas the single blue ones are basic and they have just 100 gold in them. So the game tells us to build the treasury at least 5x5. Five five. So if we just excavate all this and build the treasury around there, that should fix it for us. Uh, something that was a little bit sad to me in the Dungeons franchise has always been that there's so much space you can't build in. Like you're just forbidden. Um... The map is also not helpful <laughs> in terms of knowing what's around you. you. You see the yellow bits, this is gold, clearly. Uh, but you don't see all that much else, honestly. So, I think it gets a little bit more sensible as time goes on. But uh, let's go ahead and try and figure out how to build anything anyway. Uh, so, research. How do we do research without having anything to research in? I don't know. Okay, so we have a few paths to go through. There was research in the last one where it worked a little bit differently, I think. Uh, so we could upgrade the horde or we could upgrade the dungeon. Um, this goes through gold, clearly. So we can increase how, increase how many snots we can have, uh, which also unlocks some options here. Um, the throne room is... Okay, this expands. Maybe that's, that's why we have so much un... Um, unexcavatable stuff around there because it needs to expand in that direction might be. Uh, so, okay, now we need to research some of the things that we need to build, right? So, uh, evilness is stored in the Vault of Evilness, of course, obviously. Uh, we can then research, which is kind of weird because this is research. So, uh, all right. So, unlocks additional skills for your little snots. When a little snot is slapped, its speed increased by an additional 25%, which is something you have to do. Um, so let's first, let's get the treasury, let's get the gobbler farm. Uh, we can't, we don't have enough money. Uh, the game knows what it's doing. So let's go to building, uh, select our treasury and again, just hold on left click and pull it across where you want it to be. Now in dungeon keeper, uh, it was basically like you see here, more or less, they had to manually reinforce the walls. This just happens. Stored in the throne room was simply not even close to enough for a proper gold bar. And as you do this um, in dungeons as opposed to Dungeon Keeper, I know I'm, I'm gonna make all the comparisons here because that's the quintessential dungeon game for me. Dungeon Keeper is just the game uh, when it comes to this. And dungeons clearly takes a lot of it. Right, even down to the it's payday because payday was a thing in Dungeon Keeper, where your little creatures went out and uh, had to be paid, <laughs> obviously. So uh, we need to go back into the research, unlock uh, the Gobbler Farm, and maybe the Vault of Evilness as well, and maybe we also go into the Horde research here. Uh, I should have read this maybe, <laughs> so. You can unlock a hideout, which uh, where your creatures can go sleep, and you can unlock which creatures to be able to recruit. So right now we don't have that much gold anymore. We have 75, uh, 50. Uh, so we can have a naga or orc. Now the problem is with the naga, they are healers mainly, uh, so they are not super helpful as a first and frontline unit. So we'll have to go with something else. I don't like that the main menu is there. Uh, that's not something I will access a lot while I'm playing, I don't think. So, I don't know what the point of that is. Uh, let's build a cobbler farm. Or a cobbler farm, so they can get going. And let's research the slap thing. And we'll just slap this guy. You hurt them a little bit with it, but uh, they go faster. So, it's like a little idle game. In between, you just hit your boys in the head. The <laughs> Look how they have these little fake mountains. The okay, so I don't have to build anything in the gobbler farm. I do believe in the last ones, in the past few ones, it was always um, you had to add items 
for like furniture to the rooms to make them functional. Not all rooms, but definitely some. In this case, apparently, uh, you don't have to add anything to the treasury and you don't have to add anything to the cobbler farm. They will just uh, start growing here. I'm trying to figure out how to how to turn my camera, but I don't know. Uh, what does the right click do? I have a feeling it's gonna... Because it turns like this. Oh, okay. I can just mass slap everyone. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's that's kind of silly. Okay, everyone here is slapped. I don't slap them multiple times. I like that. That's very good. That's very helpful. So I'm not tempted to just... Uh, you know completely destroy them so we excavated this now we're supposed to build a residential area let's go research the naga i think we have enough and let's also go and research the next dungeon level and the next horde level because we have the money and what do we want probably a workshop soon doors doors are nice and floor traps and simple traps uh, but for those we're gonna need either gnomes or goblins so gnomes are great tinkers unlocks the gnome creature uh, goblins are more like rogues basically um, so I think we'll want the tinkers but we can't actually afford them because we don't have evilness of that uh, scale yet so okay so our boys build the rooms they're not instantly built so that's kind of the the balancing act right sheltering evil had built a hideout for the horde's creatures these could henceforth build themselves a place to rest there so i'm expecting creatures to come out of this but not automatically you have to buy them basically you have to recruit them um the army raising evil had recruited its first creature a bit underwhelming, considering that it was sitting on the throne of the gods a short time ago. But fresh starts are never easy. The evilest evil could use the hand of terror, not only to intervene, but also to lend its little snots the impetus they needed by giving them a spirited slap. The detestable evil has earned some delicious evilness. Excellent things could be done with it, such as exploring new stuff. However, first, a place had to be found where the evilness could be stored. The absolute evil quickly built a vault of evilness. So, so far, I must say it plays really well. Um, I'm, I'm impressed. It's, it's very snappy. Everything goes quick. Everything is responsive, which is really nice because uh, these games from smaller developers tend to have performance issues uh, in the most unimaginable weird ways. Uh, and I think this is a this is a bug. Like these are done building. This is the building animation still going on. Um, so it used to be your creatures just set up your own stuff, uh, but now your little boys have to basically build them for you, which is okay. Uh, it's not the worst thing. So we're building our chamber for evilness. I don't think this effect over there will ever wear off. Don't feel like it anyway. So let's make sure we get everyone motivated to do their stuff quickly. And they do speed up some. I really like it. Um, in all the games you had to individually click them. But now that you can just hold it down and you have this area of effect and you just get them. Fantastic. That's really good. Alright, so we have 150 evilness. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to be able to... I was supposed to dig through here. Sooner or later, the greedy dwarves would dig their way into the mm. dungeon. The perfidious evil used a workshop to prepare traps to stop the gold-stealing dwarves in their tracks. <laughs> right, so we'll have to research the workshop, uh, which is here. And then we'll probably want some of these things. We have the money, I think. Well, some of it. But we also need these guys. Uh, I think we can put anyone working in the shop, but... You know... Um, let's let's follow the tutorial here because I feel like this is one of those tutorials where your resources are pretty pretty clearly put like you get what you get but you can see 
walls being reinforced by your creatures, which is nice. Could not only make new units or rooms available, but also increase the maximum number of little slots or creatures. The hard work right, allowed by evil had built a tinkerer's cave. Here, little slots could use the work units to make toolboxes, which were needed for the more extravagant dungeon accoutrements. Yeah, these are still being built. I'm so this is new. I think this pathway. I'm dying of old age here. I sure hope not, because I have a whole different set of plans for just how you lot are gonna die here. Alright, so having reinforced walls slows them down. I don't think it actually stops them like it did in Dungeon Keeper. So keep that in mind. Uh, we want some floor traps researched and some... I don't know what the difference is between simple traps and floor traps, but I like uh, this and we definitely want the, the gnomes to help build this kind of stuff and now that we have built this or researched it uh, we get some traps here so we can have a slime trap which slows them or a small slime trap let's see if we can't see the difference oh okay that's just a very long one so since we don't have anything to shoot them with kind of yet we'll just go with a damage trap and then we'll add a slime trap after and get some more of these going. I like that it shows you where the enemy is going to come from. Uh, that is very, very good. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, let's put some doors down. Also, let's put a door here. Maybe they, they attack that, you know. And I feel like we should have another door toward our dungeon. And maybe some more the first traps. damage and slime here harder for the greedy dwarves to steal the gold from the treasury or even destroy the dungeon heart itself maybe they go around i don't know yet uh maybe they get to this and they just start going around but look at the animations i really like that you have this little snot guy running in there now can we speed him up that's the big question yes we can <laughs> apparently all right, so let's help these guys work a little bit more efficiently. And check what we can research. Now, the, the thing I think with, with, which is a little bit off-putting to a bunch of people who are going to see this now, is the style is very um, microtransaction-y mobile gamey, And they did make that little joke in the beginning. And I said they had a lot of DLC. But it was mainly story DLC. It was almost exclusively story DLC and some maps. So that's what I'm expecting to be the thing again, but I don't know. Uh, the the digital deluxe edition that you can buy uh, in pre-order, um, it only has uh, cosmetic stuff, some some styles for your hand and things, and um, like soundtrack, art book, that kind of stuff. So I don't know. I don't know how the monetization is going to look like. We can just try and think about what it was before, and that was generally. Oh, look, they have different styles. Oh, I like that. That's very cute. Um, that's all I can go off of, really. And, um, yeah, maybe we buy some more units. Uh, some of these guys. Let's spend all our gold and fill up our meter here. So, maximum po population is uh, faction research increases the population limit. Uh, no room in the hideout. Okay, so we have to expand here clearly which we will immediately do but this is still silly uh, it's a demo it's not a beta or an alpha or something I would expect a little bit more completeness I must say so let's pick our army um, pick up all units very good so now we have them ready on our hand uh, f to drop them when the enemy arrives. Right now, the, the troops aren't doing anything anyway, so there's really no reason in not having them on our hand. Uh, let's build a bigger hide hideout there. Okay, okay. They're in, so... Oh, no, that was our own boys. I got scared by our own troops. <laughs> that's, not, that's not ideal. I just saw them running and everything. Oh, no! Okay. 
Right, so we'll just... When you drop them, there's a little moment of being stunned. So... I hope I've timed this halfway right. I did not. Yeah, no, it's fine. Okay. Let's pick these guys up. Throw them there. Okay, so... Dwarves had opened a passage into the dungeon. The little snots immediately executed Order 67, as they had been instructed to do by Talia in such a case, which meant that they ran through the dungeon with their arms flapping wildly. At the same time, they opened the secret trap cache, so that the tricky evil could give the dwarves a very warm welcome. Oi! Did you little honey buns forget your little baby bottles? Or how did you manage to lose to a bunch of lousy orcs? Hmm. But oi, we still have to reinforce them. Reinforcements? Attack! Obviously, the danger from the dwarves had not yet been neutralized. Luckily, the little snots had made a few traps in their spare time, and they were only too happy to make available to the all-consuming evil. All right, all right, okay. Um, these breaks... Oh boy, okay, he is a flamethrower. That's that's kind of silly. Uh, so these breaks in between are a little bit, you know, take some getting used to, I think. Uh, you can drop your units on your own ground or on neutral ground. I managed to throw one in the lava, which generally is not advisable. Let's go into the research here. Uh, research this thing. And we can get demons or undead. We are going for Horde. We can't research these right now, so we'll upgrade this or this. Uh, number of creatures goes up here, but we can't afford this now, so let's go with the Dungeon Heart. Uh, this is a bit stronger now. I don't think I'm supposed to research that, but, you know, that, that's how it is. And we're soon going to need to excavate some more gold, so let's get the gold here. So this is on the on the walls, so we can augment uh, what we already have here with that. Okay, so we'll put this down there and a pusher above. And a thresher could put that there. You know, in the center. I don't know if we're allowed to put these slime things around. But if we are, then that's what we're going to do. Have that, you know. Put some of this around here as well. So I don't know if this is the only spot where the enemy is going to come from, really. But I have my suspicions that it is. Uh, I believe traps can actually be hurt and destroyed. Not quite sure. They used to be. Might not anymore. Which would be nice if they just have a reset time. But basically, it's a little bit of a tower defense, uh, what you've got going on at the moment here. So, your creature's needs. One of your creatures is disturbingly high. It will receive need... Okay. Okay, no, no, the creature isn't high. The need is high. <laughs> I thought, okay. Uh, let's increase our food farm production here. They are slightly starving. And we don't have all that much gold left to get any more either so we'll have to go and unlock some new gold excavation sites to help keep up with demand this will look ugly but it needn't be pretty that's it all right if you've watched it this far there's not much more to the game but i'm gonna finish this mission or i'm gonna try at least so this is going to be a long one. Uh, stay and watch if you like. I'm going to explain what I'm doing as best I can. So right now I'm going to try and defend myself here from the invaders. Best we are able. So we can actually build our stuff there. I think we're fairly capable as a fighting force. We just don't have any money left, which is a bit of a problem. Because we can't give them more food. 
And we also can't, you know, recruit anything or research anything. So let's get them going. To help alleviate our gold troubles. Oh, there's a bunch of gold here. So that'll just be a big chamber. See, that's the thing. Um, obviously, actually, that's quite a lot better than it used to be. There's a lot of stuff you can actually just ex excavate. That wasn't the case before. I like that. Your little snots have completely mined out a gold vein. Very good. And our lads are building best they can. Okay, we just got some money in time for payday. If your creatures are not paid, they are likely going to start riots. So keep that in mind. That can be a problem. If you are not into riots of your creatures. Which some of you might be. I don't know. And I also don't judge. But right now, this is just gold excavation. I have no plans for any of this beside getting the gold. Ah, okay, there's another treasury there. Very good. We found that. Uh, we have a lot of evilness, but we have no gold to really benefit off of it. We're building some traps here. Uh, let's, let's motivate. Do some micromanagement here. Okay, apparently you have to wait for your uh, hand to actually arrive at the spot where you want to motivate your people. Which, okay. Alright, gives a little bit of a... Or a bit. Like something you need to wait for. A balancing act. That's what I was looking for word-wise. Uh, okay, you can see I can't afford this. So it goes kind of orange where where I'm trying to build something I cannot afford right now. But it has cleared up now. perfectly suited for cutting tree trunks. But since they wouldn't become a resource until Dungeons 5, it would have to settle for dwarves for now. Okay, so we're having enemies arrive again. Uh, best we take our army and... Well, actually, let's see what they do. How are traps fare? I mean, they're not too bad. They're not too great. So these kind of traps are obviously better suited for a combination with something that slows the enemy down. But they're not gonna help you defend. Okay, this sometimes happens where you dig somewhere and then suddenly an area opens up like that. Where there's just something open already. And this looks a little bit like a graveyard or a swamp or something. There could be enemies too. So, be aware. And let's check out the research. Research dungeon level 3. We'll do that. Done. Force hoarding evil had increased its maximum little snot limit and now had access to even more of the industrious little creatures. Okay, so we don't have to summon the snots. They just kind of come with the dungeon heart upgrade. I like that. That's good. Okay, we can... By the way, you can slap anyone and speed them up. It's not just the snots, but... Obviously, you wouldn't want to do that with your uh, fighting force too much because they might get really upset about it <laughs> and have a thing or two to say about it. Uh, let's build a treasury here so they don't do this long run that they're currently engaged in. And let's check our research again. There's still some stuff to research, including our people. Healing of horde creatures in the hideout, 100%. Love it. We'll take it. Um... And that's all we can afford right now. So that's that. Might want to expand our workshop a little bit. But we can't in this position there. Um, so it's a little bit blocked. We might just... Since we have a door here. We can just kind of go through that. And build around this obsidian bit. We need to be a little bit careful. Because if there's something else we want to expand later on. We, we don't just dig through all of it. But here we can get ourselves uh, a nice little spot for another workshop. So all of our trap business is a little bit quicker. 
think we should build another shoving thing here. Because I wonder if not maybe we can throw them into the lava, you know. So this doesn't do much yet because we don't have the thing that swirls. That turns and attacks them. Okay, everyone. Everyone gets a slap here. So they are more effective fighting force. The traps aren't really meant to kill the enemy, you know. They are more of an inconvenience. And protective measures for you. So excavate this whole thing. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want that. Because now I can't make a nice little room, you know. But such is life. So we'll build this anyway. Was a very Can't afford it. Just now we can. To slap several heroes to Nirvana at the same time. So we'll see if this is actually powerful or if uh, our little buddy here telling us stuff isn't really truthful. Okay, we need to build this thing again. So actual production can take place here. I don't like that we're kind of in front of the door. I don't think it blocks them. They should still be able to move through, but um, just aesthetic aesthetically, you know, uh, my problem's there. I could have, of course, excavated this a little bit more and put it back, but I didn't think of that in time. And so I'm hoping the Thresher, as they move slowly around there, is going to thrash them as they move slowly around there, you know. That's my whole deal here. Let's excavate more of the gold. It's going to be the weirdest room over there. I just want to be sure we get our money's worth here. Can we research something new? Ah, uh, yes, there are upgrades as well. So what does it want us to upgrade? Destroy the Dwarven Great Hall. Destroy the Destroyer of Worlds Class Hammer. That's in the Overworld, which we haven't really reached yet. Uh, I think we have to go through this to get there. All right, look at that. And it kicked them into the lava as well. So I would say that's pretty effective. A new area has been unearthed in the dungeon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's not bad. So the little goat riders, they, they are getting places. I like that we have this safe area where they can just kind of slide behind on the side. That's really neat. I like it. The, the traps are much more effective than they have ever been, I think. Can't even remember traps being this effective. Uh, and we can upgrade them too, so let's do that. And we can also upgrade uh, the World of Evilness, which we don't really need to do. Uh, let's upgrade the Orcs. Because they then get something cool to do. We could get the Goblins. We can upgrade the Workshop. Increase the capacity per tile by one. Which means uh, they build these boxes here. And they have to store them in the Workshop after building. Uh, but, but we have enough space for these at the moment. I don't think that's an issue. Uh, right, uh, so we don't need this necessarily. Let's get them just ready. And we could get more throne room. Shards of the do not break off and shoot towards attackers in the throne room. That's cool. Uh, level 2 above... The, uh, okay, that's pretty good. Let's increase capacity per tile by 1. So you need less room. But that kind of means your creatures aren't allowed to actually eat everything. <laughs> Um, let's upgrade our workforce a little bit so they can, you know, run sometimes. Get these guys going proper. These guys here as well. Okay, there's more gold to be harvested everywhere. Okay, there's a new proper gold vein. 
Oh boy, look at them. Okay, this is being slapped and using this print ability. That's crazy. That's really quick. Right, okay. Let's just upgrade everything as far as we can afford it. And now I think it's time for an attack. Or can we can we buy more? No. So it's time for an attack. We'll just take everyone and put them right there. <laughs> Basically. Where well, they're going to be hit in the face a bit because I put them in a bad position. Everyone is motivated to do their best. I don't want you guys to running back. There's, there's battle to be done. Stop running away. Okay, they're sleepy. They're not gonna fight. No matter what you do. Apparently. Okay, we pushed forward a little bit. Which is good. Uh, let's build some traps in their spot. You know. Like this. And the long slime underneath it. And this in front. And we could build another thresher here. With more slime around it. Okay, we have a bit of a problem here. Payday. Our army got, uh, like, separated a little bit. And so we had very few creatures engaging quite difficult enemies there. Which isn't ideal. You don't want that. But pushing forward, it is allows us to build more. I like that this is a very long mission, honestly, for, for a demo. That's good. That's really good. Let's play through it all. I'm a little bit scared to go in this direction, I must admit. You never know what you're going to find. So there's another gold vein. We're going to build a light, another just a tiny treasury around it. To be even more effective against dwarves. <laughs> I do like the humor to a degree. It's, it's very cheesy. And not all of it lands, but... I will at least always let them try to land. Okay, what's our money situation here? The scrolling is very, very slow. Okay, everyone is kind of busy with other things. A thrasher trap not only took out one hero, it also provided any and all surrounding heroes with some nutritious cauliflower at the same time. Cauliflower ears, that is. Because boxers and cauliflower ears, you know, that it's just... A lot of the jokes that they make require explanation. <laughs> and I think just as a general rule for comedy, that's very suboptimal. And they do try to walk in a group, I think. Or there's no other reason why these might be standing still right now. As far as spiritual successes to Dungeon Keeper go, this is it. In my opinion, this is it. Uh, the worst function from Dungeon Keeper 2 where your creatures are slightly stunned after you drop them has moved through all these games as a sort of balancing thing and I really hate it and I wish they weren't in uh, these kind of functions but well that's what you get that's what's there so nothing to be done about it uh let's see could have built a long one there And another long slime trap with another buzz saw. So we'll just build our way in with traps. Check our croup. Everyone is fine. So I think we'll go for another attack here. Just drop them all there. They have to live with a little bit of damage to begin with because I am not good at this. <laughs> I do not know how far to push them off. Uh, I'm convinced. This demo has convinced me uh, that the next dungeon's uh, installment is going to be fine. 
It's probably not going to be anything groundbreaking, breaking, but I honestly didn't expect anything either. So, uh, that's good. To me, that's good. This is a good game. If you liked any of the predecessors, if you liked Dungeon Keeper, this is for you. They have my endorsement. Uh, Calypso is a very small developer. They make stuff like Tropico. But they make it with love. I feel like this is one of the few companies in the world where I figure, okay, you can actually feel that uh, they care for the product that they put out. It's cheesy, but you can rest assured that the actual kind of humor that these um, developers feel is funny. <laughs> One of your creatures has died. I'm sure you're shedding a tear right now as you hire the next three. Next Actually, you may I do feel sad. To resurrect these creatures. <laughs> What's one dead creature if it gets one closer to the goal of freeing me? Come on, free me already, you rotten maggots! All right, I don't know what we're fighting here, but it's strong. Is it a door? Sword traps, blades, word along the wall. Just waiting yeah. for bread to slice. Or heroes, whichever came first. I don't know why I picked up a dead hero. Okay, let's buy ourselves a new Naga. I think this is what we lost. And just kind of falls right here. Which is cool. So you can buy a creature right into the enemy core. I'm not opposed to this. Free hamster wheel of death. The dwarves were okay. defeated for the time being. Satisfied, the essence of absolute evil rubbed something together that could perhaps pass for two hands together. The I don't know how that works. Evil had conquered the exit. This left the way to the surface open for its troops. A thrasher had been set up and was waiting for heroes who dared to go near the carousel. Is this something I have to build into the wall? Sometimes they have this. I really don't understand how this works. Uh, no idea. Requires an adjacent wall. Yeah, okay, but how adjacent? Where adjacent? This adjacent? Oh, okay, these are not actual walls, so that's not working. All right, we can't dig into these. All right, okay, I get it. Oh, I think I do. So we should be able to build this here somewhere. Can we turn it? No. At least I don't know how. Let's check the controls real quick. Um, now, I if I were able to search this, this would be even better. But let's see. Dungeon. Uh, room construction menu. Rotate work unit. O. Okay, so let's try O for rotation because that makes a lot of sense. All ah, right, okay. Good. I really don't know where to uh, where to put this. <laughs> what do you mean it needs an adjacent wall? What counts as an adjacent wall? Does it need it? Maybe okay, let's let's get a tunnel. Just a long tunnel where we have something like that. Okay, I Okay, here. Do we have such a situation here anywhere? No. But we could potentially do that by excavating this one. That would give us one of those options. I don't know what the what this thing here is for. Okay. So we can dig through here. And we should build some threshers around that, or uh, slime traps around this boy. Some of this. Though, now that I built this, they might go here. <laughs> so, it's probably not ideal. We can just build another thresher. Spend all our money on, on traps. So now I think our dungeon is in fairly safe hands. Um, definitely need to find more gold, so we'll just keep doing this. 
excavating toward gold. Uh, but now we can go up. So uh, we can double click this or you can just go on the map over here. That's how you go up. And we're seeing an enemy army coming our way. I don't think our boys are going to be done with this before the enemies arrive, so... Enemies are in the dungeon. It's fine, they're not going to get through alive. Not on everything we built, anyway. Some. I'll get through some of it. Set this to excavate and build a little treasury around it. Saw trap was perfectly suited for cutting tree trunks, but since they wouldn't become a resource until Dungeons Five, it would. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Dwarves for now. I like the traps. This is this is very fun, to me, I must say. Okay, so uh, we select all of our army. Uh, okay, it doesn't work like that. Um, we select all of our army. We go here and send them there. The absolute evil's creatures blinked a little as they stepped into the glaring light of the sun. Finally, they could lay waste not only to the boring corridors of the dungeon, but also to the lush green meadows of the overworld. So these camps here is where enemies spawn, so we want to take those out. And also check around a little bit. You never know what you find. Can we upgrade anything sensible? This. Uh, we're not allowed to. We have the money, but we're just simply not allowed. Okay, I think. It's all the upgrades then. So we'll just have to wait for our army to finish this hero camp extremely slowly. It's payday. The horrific evil had destroyed a camp in the overworld. The defeated heroes ran away crying and tried to entrench themselves behind even higher walls. Okay. Let's check this out. There are some villagers. I have some trapped creatures, which we will immediately go and free. Enemies I wonder. Have entered the dungeon. Yeah, they can. Your it's fine. Creatures have destroyed a cage. At this point, it doesn't really matter anymore. I think they're not going to go through alive. Oh, I can put this here. Death. Very good. Put in position. Oh, actually, okay. All right. Definitely be anything but happy. I get it. There, there's a lot of options to build that. Right there. Okay, okay. I don't know how it works, though. Oh, a snot has to go in there? Ah, oh, that's kind of pointless. Let's build one. Here. Oh, no, okay. We have to go deeper. So we can build one here, but I think it's like the the least sensible. You want this at the end of a of a road, kinda. Appears to me. Okay, let's send our troops further. So what happens if we kill the villagers? Is this evilness? Nope. They don't give us evilness. Well, they don't drop any evilness. That's different from not getting any. Okay, we'll move our troops in here. And expectation of... Yep. Yeah. There's some enemies there. No killing villagers doesn't... Now it gives us 10. 10 evilness. It's 
enough evilness for my taste. So you excavated this so we can have this here now? A hamster wheel of okay, that's... <laughs> the little no one's gonna go there. A eye out for a <gasps> oh well. The vile evil had destroyed another of the hero's camps. Screaming at the top of their voices, the survivors took to their heels. Okay, so even killing these supply crates and stuff gives you evil. There, there's a lot of sources for that. Um, ah, there's more cages. So let's go take care of that. Always going to the back line first. If you can. Music is pretty decent as well. I mainly just really like Destroy our dungeon. It's very nice. <laughs> look at all the red carpets around here because that's the entrance bit of it. It should only look like this, but not the way we build it. Uh, do we have a capacity? Yes. Maximum evilness is 1440. Let's get some more evilness down here. Wait, there's a research for a throne room. So build more evilness storage here. And our lads are done with destroying stuff. So this is a part you used to have to balance. Dwarfs could easily handle a few orcs. Problems, brother mine? Oh, what a shame. I had actually already planned on making myself a tea set out of dwarf skulls. Talia, your evilness truly knows no bounds. These dwarfs are part of the Alliance of Good. You. The path to the dwarves' oversized hammer lay open. The trembling heroes prepared themselves for the final battle. So we got a bunch of groups here. Yeah, we're slicing pretty decently through all this. So you used to have to balance your overworld activities heavily against what you did on the ground. Um... Because the traps weren't nearly as efficient as they are now. But I like this. This is a great change. Oh boy, no. Oh, we're over our limit as it is anyway, so it doesn't really matter. What is at these ends? Is there more caged creatures? No. So we'll just go and destroy this hammer and be done with it. I think. Maybe there's more to it. Actually, we lost two creatures. Ah, uh, we're still fine on gold veins. We got enough around here. Nice. The dwarven equipment spectacularly went up in flames, which was rather odd, as the creatures had only been hitting the thing with their weapons. But fine. Perhaps horde weapons were made of flint. Yet the distraction provided by the dwarven intervention had shifted the destruction-loving evil's focus long enough for Talia and her stepbrother Tristan to disappear into the distance. With an imaginary sigh, the staggering evil took one last look around before setting off in pursuit. The path led to the Hellwoods, an eerie place claimed by the demonic creatures of the underworld. <laughs> All right. Again, we get the scrolling statistics, which you cannot interact with. Um, there's a next map. That is a very extensive uh, demo. And I, I'm i going to leave it here for today. So I hope I, I'm allowed to... Let's skip this. So I'm leaving it here for today. Go download the demo yourself. Play it yourself. It's a generous demo. It's very generous. Even the first mission, I, I would have thought would be sufficient as a demo. That there is a second mission here is really quite impressive. 
Um, I might play it. I don't know. I might upload it as well. But for now, my recommendation based on the demo, based on my previous experiences, both with Calypso and with the Dungeon series, if any of what you saw today appeals to you where you think, hey, I would like to play this, uh, absolutely get it. There's really not much you can do wrong with it unless the humor gets on your nerves. But it does for me, yet I still enjoy playing these games. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like, uh, leave a subscription. See you around next time. And if you do choose to buy this uh, based on my recommendation, I hope you enjoy. And see you around next time. Until then, bye-bye.